Are the jet streams collapsing now? Something very mysterious is happening to the planet's major wind streams and scientists are completely perplexed. Find out exactly what is going on and what affects the behavior of the jet streams has on us in this video. So be sure to stay tuned until the end and if you like the video, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thanks a lot guys and welcome. A while back, a massive temperature anomaly in the North Atlantic dominated the headlines. I had explained in an older video why this anomaly was probably due to a combination of El Nino, missing Saharan dust, and missing sulfur emissions from cargo ships. Now the next apocalyptic announcement, Earth's jet streams are behaving completely chaotically. But first, let's clarify what a jet stream is in the first place. Jet stream refers to a strong, narrow current of air in the atmosphere that orbits our planet in large, wave-like bands. These occur due to differences in temperature and pressure between the polar regions and the tropics. Why? As anyone who has been to both Scandinavia and the rainforest knows, the air is warmed more by solar radiation in the equatorial regions than in the polar regions. And these temperature differences lead to the formation of high and low pressure areas. As air always moves from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure, horizontal air currents are created. By the way, this is a nice proof of the spherical shape of the Earth. On a flat Earth, where solar radiation would be the same everywhere, the phenomenon of these temperature and pressure differences would be inexplicable. Sorry flat earthers. I show you now a proof of the flat Earth. I have just put a lighter on a matchbox. Okay? Nothing moves at all, here nothing turns, here no centrifugal forces work. Now the rotation of the Earth is added. Due to the Coriolis effect, you probably remember it from your physics lessons, which is caused by the rotation of the Earth. The air currents are deflected in east-west direction and form the jet stream. There are two main streams, the polar jet stream at higher latitudes and the tropical jet stream at lower latitudes. I know, very complex, so summarized again, different solar radiation causes different temperatures, thus air currents move from the equator towards the poles. Due to the Earth's rotation, these are deflected in an east-west direction, resulting in the jet stream. This is why a flight from east to west takes longer than a flight in the other direction, because airplanes use these jet streams as a kind of air highway. The jet stream as a global wind flow is, of course, immensely important and has enormous impact on weather patterns, affecting the direction of air masses, changes in temperature and humidity, and changes in high and low pressure areas. Because of this, one might find it a worrisome how the jet stream is currently behaving. Science journalist Carly Casella writes, The southern part of the jet stream over North America has completely broken apart, and is currently undergoing a vicious revolution that has triggered a heat wave unlike any other. We can check this out for ourselves at earth.nullschool.net and actually see that under the current course of the jet stream, a kind of split-off has formed. Meteorologists talk about a heat dome and the temperatures that resulted were really record-breaking. In Mexico, for example, a summary 49.5 degrees Celsius were measured. Phew! I am part of the year in Sicily and like the heat and sun very much, but at almost 50 degrees Celsius it would be enough for me. In such heat it is not even fun to eat pizza anymore, and then the whole life is no fun. The heat bell over North America is extremely energetic and this is probably due to the jet stream. The fact that it runs in such a strange and fragmented way in the northern hemisphere is what allowed this separated area of warmth to form in the first place. Meteorologist Jeff Berardelli writes on X formerly Twitter, when I look at this jet stream, the word insanity comes to mind. This constellation, likely amplified by global warming, is producing record heat so extreme that even experts are amazed. What is certain is that the jet stream appears unstable and fragmented right now. Instead of a continuous east-west motion, the jet stream bands are more wavy, leading to blockages and extreme weather events. So what's going on here? Why is the jet stream behaving so mysteriously? Is it mainly due to global warming, as Jeff Berardelli has written? Climate warming due to climate change can have an impact on the jet stream. This is because when temperatures warm even in regions farther from the equator, it changes the airflow between the equator and the pole region. Without temperature differences, no more clear differences between high and low pressure areas of equator and pole regions, 
thus no more so strong air currents, and thus a weaker jet stream. So it can be one of the causes. However, I am surprised that many people now mention global warming as the main cause, because there is a much more acute event that is the obvious main cause, El Nino. This is a natural climate phenomenon characterized by warming of surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. Although it is a local event, it has a global impact because it changes ocean and wind currents. I have just produced a very detailed video on El Nino, so if you are interested in the details of this phenomenon, feel free to click on the info box. So what is happening right now? During an El Nino event, the normal temperature differences between the eastern and western Pacific are reduced, leading to a change in pressure. And this change affects the jet stream, and it can contribute to instability and fragmentation. As a result, jet stream bands at higher latitudes are disturbed and deflected, which can lead to unusual weather phenomena. For example, high-pressure areas can be blocked in certain regions, which can then lead to prolonged heat waves, but also cold waves, for that matter. At the same time, low-pressure areas can get stuck in other regions, which can lead to increased rainfall or even flooding, which is why El Nino actually increases hurricanes in some regions, but decreases hurricane frequency in others. These changes in the jet stream are altering weather around the world. In some regions, they can lead to droughts, heat waves, and wildfires, while other regions face storms, heavy rains, and cold spells. These impacts can be felt locally, but also on a global scale. All right, now I can hear some of you asking. Why is that weird man from the internet telling me about this La Ninja thing now? Because by now there is a consensus among meteorologists that recently the new El Nino phase has begun. The previous periods were characterized by the opposite phenomenon, La Nina, that rather lowered the temperatures. So now we are at the beginning of the new El Nino phase and the temporal as well as factual connection with the behavior of the jet stream. And also the temperature anomalies in the North Atlantic is more than clear from my point of view. This is likely to be the main cause in my view. Climate change is possibly amplifying the effect. On the website of NOAA, the US Weather and Oceanographic Administration, it says with respect to the influence of El Nino. As the position of warm water shifts back and forth along the equator over the Pacific Ocean, the region with the greatest evaporation of water into the atmosphere also shifts with it. This has profound implications for the average position of the jet stream. So the curious weather phenomena we are experiencing are probably all related to the new El Nino phase. Why is both the fragmentation of the jet stream and the temperature anomaly in the Atlantic so unusually strong? Either because climate change is amplifying the effects of El Nino this time, or because we are experiencing a particularly powerful El Nino phase. To tell for sure, we need to keep monitoring it and collecting data. But no matter which of the two options it is, we can probably expect some special weather events in the very near future. So that I can continue to adjust to so many viewers, I would be galactically happy if you now follow my channel. Because from the YouTube statistics I know that a large part of the viewers have not yet subscribed at all. It costs nothing, it helps me a lot and you won't miss any more science videos. Many, many thanks guys. In our upcoming video, things are going to get exciting again. Once again you can expect a supercut, this time about black holes. So don't miss the new video next Saturday. It is as always very exciting. And if you want to support my channel, feel free to visit the online store, there you will find the t-shirts from my videos. Otherwise, I would say, see you in the next video. Take care, guys.